I want to give each of you up here about a minute right now to talk about something you want us to all focus on. Barriers to reentry. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right. All right, Raheem, you start. So as we talk about the barriers to reentry, I think it's two. The first one is poverty as it, as it relates to uh, going to jail. If you're, impo if, you have, if you're poor, you can't get out. And then there's felonism as it relates to getting out of prison and what happens when, um, from a social, economic, political perspective, that you're denied access. Uh, for example, certain persons in certain crimes, they can't live in apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. They don't qualify in terms of an application. There are certain jobs that even though uh, people say they won't look at your past, they do look at your past, you won't be able to get. And then uh, there is this thing that happens within even family members where felonism causes your family to look at you different. And this is uh, just a legal discrimination against persons who have been convicted of felonies. And so those, those are the barriers that um, we can easily remove with, with re-enfranchisement of individuals. And that's gonna push us into granting voting rights to the 400,000 people who have uh, felonies in the state of Tennessee. What do you, th what do you think we should focus on, Don? What do you, what, and and how, now I'm gonna ask you, how realistic is it we can really change things? I mean, you, you're obviously all in the trenches here fighting this. How optimistic are you we can change things in the next 10 years? Oh, I'm optimistic. I believe we can change things. I believe the power of people, and we're already starting to see some changes. Um, and what, what I would, I guess the issue, it's not really a, necessarily a barrier to reentry, but it is um, related in that understanding why people are in, in, involved in the criminal legal system and how that impacts their life long term. And specifically, the issue I want to talk about that, that Choosing Justice is focusing on is looking at people um, for the whole person that they are and all of the things that are impacting their life when they come into the criminal legal system. So are there issues that if we can help them, can, can we, if we can connect them to the services that they may need or to the help that may need, if we can look at their strengths and um, invest in their strengths, um, can we move them out of the criminal legal system into successful uh, so they can avoid it? And not I think just write people off. Not write people off, but look at them for the whole person they are. And what, what CJI is doing is, in addition to providing criminal legal defense representation, we also offer civil legal representation for issues that are collateral to an arrest. So if I'm arrested, I may be at risk of losing my housing. Um, if I'm arrested, then I may lose my disability. If I'm in, and so what we look at is how can we help you address issues that one may bring you into the criminal legal system so that you don't come back in. And once you're in that, how can we help you uh, um, avoid the negative collateral consequences to that? In one minute, what, what, what do you think people need to focus on? Um, I definitely think that people need to focus on the criminalization of poverty. Um, I think that we need to focus on coming together. Um, we have a survey that's bit uh, dot Lee L Y and then forward slash it is not a crime just basically saying it's not a crime to be poor it shouldn't be a crime to be poor where people can um, tell us you know what is their experiences with the criminalization of poverty and what are the solutions that we envision so that we can come together and, and um, come up with solutions that we come up with to address this issue. And again, uh, we'll be right outside the courthouse with Song Nashville tomorrow at 9 a.m. So anybody that wants to come there, it'll be awesome. And I just think it's going to take all of us. I think it's going to take all of us coming together. If this system the way it is doesn't benefit you, join into a movement, join into an organization that's working to fight these issues, like Free Hearts, like Unheard Voices Outreach, like Truth and Justice Initiative. And let's just, I, I'm definitely optimistic. It's a lot of bubbling up, and I think it can definitely happen within 10 years. All right, we'll take a quick break. Be back right after this.